Why are there so many myths about nutrition? Um, when we're thinking about kind of public misconceptions about nutrition, um, it's a strange field actually, because many aspects of science, the public are happy to say, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, but with food and nutrition, people are happy to, to form a view. And it's easy for us then to point the finger at the public and say it's a public misconception, they shouldn't be receptive to those views. But I think actually there's a lot of onus on the scientists for a start. There's research papers that the conclusions are worded in a way that perhaps isn't appropriate at all, or at the very least is not appropriate to help the public understand what the finding was. And then this goes right along the process from press officers at research institutes to journalists, to then the editors that can adjust the, what the journalists have written, and right through on social media to bloggers, um, some of whom really are very well informed. But then there's a lot of bloggers out there who, because they eat, they feel they're a nutrition expert, and the public don't have the ability in every case to distinguish between what is useful information and what isn't. So just a few things I feel should really be monitored carefully. One, the public should be asking even if they haven't the ability to evaluate evidence for themselves, they should just be asking, who am I listening to? What's their qualification and experience to be able to, to pass these judgments? But then also I think, both in the scientific literature and public consumption media, a lot of the hype should be more controlled. Um, and particularly I think that means reporting accurately what's been found. So if a study has observed a particular mechanistic outcome at a cellular level or in an animal model, we shouldn't then see a headline that's telling people to go and adopt a certain behaviour or start eating in a certain way. Um, and equally I think the public should be aware that if they see a study that's cross-sectional, and often if we see a study in the paper that has hundreds of thousands of participants, this will be cross-sectional research. So the numbers are good because we can have greater confidence in the patterns we're seeing, but what we can't take from those patterns is any information about causality. So you shouldn't start to um, impact your daily activities by saying, I'll adopt this recommendation because a cross-sectional study has taught me something. For that, you need randomised control trials.